Today, we're going to use three colors to paint some tulips in a vase, and we're going to be making some color value swap outs. These are not going to be dramatic color value swap outs, but the point is not to match the color in the photograph, but to indeed match the value, meaning how light or dark the actual shapes are. So let's get started. Oh, so here we go, a little bit of a ride there. <laughs> anyway, I'm using a number 12 round, which I don't usually use round, so I don't have a lot of control here. Hansa yellow medium, which is from Daniel Smith, a coral red, which is from Daniel Smith, and an ultramarine blue, which is from uh, Windsor Newton. These are all professional grade, and I know it saves money if you actually buy student grade, but the truth is you don't get as much pigment for your buck. So you end up squeezing out a lot more paint. That's just a little tip for you. The first thing I'm going to do is put in some yellow anywhere I know that I want to leave the lights of the paper or the whites of the paper. Because the whites of the paper in the end are not going to be white, but they're going to appear that way. Now I'm doing a lot of mixing and using my uh, value shape finder there because I'm looking for any mid shapes that I can find. And right now they're going to be my darkest darks, but in the end they're not going to be my darkest darks, but right now they are. So I mixed up a little bit of that red and added a tiny bit of blue to it in order to make a pretty tipped uh, dark red. Now I match the value of this green that I mixed from yellow and ultramarine blue with the red that I put in, because I remember I said is this color value swap out match. I realized that the shapes above that I put in already are the exact same value, meaning darkness or lightness, as that green. So that's what I'm looking for through the value finder. I'm looking for matching value and then I'll mix up the color that matches the value. Which is very different than looking at the photograph and trying to match the color to the photograph. Something that's weird of course about photographs is they take away your lightest lights for the most part and they also are confusing because they'll give you a lot more of the dark darks and sometimes the darkest darks kind of disappear and you can't even see what the shapes are. So you got to compensate for that. All right, now we're going into mid-tones. Now I have quite a few mid-tones mixed up there from the Hansa yellow and from that red coral. And I'm using as few strokes as possible and a very loaded brush. And you can see it's quite drippy. I, like I said, I wish I had control over the round brush the way I do over the flats. I don't know why I picked around today, but I thought I want to get back to some what I think of as just good old-fashioned fun painting. And I've been I haven't done that for a while, so I thought, well, let's do that. It's always fun to do something different. Again, looking for shapes, because I'm not really interested in the um, cut glass, because, you know, that's fine for lots of people, but that's just not where my interest lies. Now, what also happens, and that I varied here, is that the um, there are quite a few neutrals in that cut glass, and I decided not to make those neutrals. I pushed color in this case. I tried to assign a color to every one of those um, spots that I put in. I don't usually do that when I paint glass. I usually get, lean heavily into neutrals, but for some reason today I was just not in the mood. <laughs> Sometimes you have to go with the mood that you're in. Maybe I felt some exuberance today. I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, um, now I'm looking at, now I mixed up some neutrals. Now to mix up my neutrals, what I, what I generally do is I mix all three of my, the colors that I'm using and either tip toward um, like a dark uh, bluish gray or tip toward a, a brownish gray. Either one will work. The point of having a real limited palette like this is it forces you to mix, so it's really good practice, and it's gonna be cohesive because you're always using the same colors in all your mixes. And so nothing will look like it sort of doesn't belong. They're all in the same family, they're all related. So now I'm doing a little bit of study. I'm really looking at what do I want to leave out? Because I'm going to leave a few of the whites there, not many. And sticking those in. So much fun to paint this way. I mean, it's just, you just get lost in, in, in color and shape. And water, you know, water management. A lot of watercolor is water management, which if you're watching this, you know that. Now there was a cast shadow, and so I know the cast shadow is going to be made up of the colors that I've put in the vase and the flowers themselves. So uh, I had to plunk in a little bit of yellow in that shadow. It's not something that you actually see in the photograph. It's something that you won't really feel. 
Now we're going to do what they call cutting around. So I mixed up ultramarine blue and some of that red coral, and I'm going to cut around those shapes. I do not wet, wet the paper, but I do work upside down so the water will tend to cascade down and give me a, a more fluid wash. So that's going pretty well. And that was ultramarine blue and also a little bit of a violet that I mixed up with, which ultramarine blue and the coral. Then I go away because I need to think for a while. You know, by now I've been working. Come back and, oh no, I haven't come back yet. I'm just reinforcing some of those shapes. Those, remember those first shapes I made? You know, originally they were quite dark. Well, they're not dark enough now. And then I wanted to see if, uh, yeah, I felt like I didn't have anything that was neutral and I needed some neutrals, so I stuck in a few. That's kind of the glue in a painting. Oh, wow, there's some logging going on behind. Whoa, holy smokes, a tree just fell down behind me, which was planned. It's, it, but I hope I heard it, but I don't think you're going to hear it. It's pretty dramatic when those trees come down, though. There's such cracking. It's a bit of a mournful sound, I have to say. So, um, like I said, so I now I'm going to probably walk away almost any minute now because I've probably been working mm, 35 minutes, something like that. Uh, and I need to clear my head. And I like this, you know, there's nothing nothing wrong with this. But um, I thought, you know, I think I need to darken the background. Just something informed me that maybe I needed to do that. And so um, I have the option to do it or not do it, and I decided that I would. And in this case, what I did was I said, look, you're having fun keeping things really simple today. Let's keep things as simple as possible. Turn the thing upside down, make sure that the background that I put in is dry, and now I'm just going to put ultramarine blue on top of that. Again, normally I would make this a neutral, but boy, I just was not in the mood today. Hmm, wonder what's going on. Maybe it's a little bit of spring. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I definitely go wherever my mood tends to take me rather than, uh, um, I, don't, I, I don't know, I was just, just in the mood. Yeah, I like that better. Probably because, you know, orange is the complementary color to blue, and there's an awful lot of orange in those tulips, so I feel like that works a little bit better and is more impactful. Now, if I wasn't sticking to my three-color formula here, you know, I might decide to put in a background which might have some Prussian blue in it, which would make it everything, um, that whole background, darker, but I don't want to do that. I'm just, I, I thought, you know, let's, let's up the difference between a light background and a dark background and somehow ultramarine blues felt about right. And then I sat back and just made a couple of adjustments that happened inside the vase where I felt like there was one or two marks that were too dark. But that's that's for you know real, real picky picky looking at. So remember to keep the whites your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. Remember you don't need a lot of colors to make a painting, but you do need a red, a yellow, and a blue. All right, see you next time. Bye-bye.